can do okay. All right. Good morning and welcome to Little River United Church of Christ. My name is Reverend Alexis Kossum, and it is so wonderful to have you all worshiping with us this morning. Let me draw your attention to a couple of announcements. First of all, welcome from Little River United Church of Christ. I am in the building today because we are experimenting with a couple of uh, new elements this morning. I want to thank our communications committee and Craig and John for helping us to secure some video equipment such that we could record this morning's sermon from the sanctuary. Several of you have let us know that it would be um, wonderful to have some parts of the service from the building. So we are um, heeding that feedback and experimenting with that today. So. I ask for your patience. Um, every time we try something new in these virtual days, it takes some getting used to. So just a reminder that if anything happens with the video or the streaming, give us a second to troubleshoot it, stay on the Zoom. Um, if Zoom crashes for some reason, we pray that won't happen, um, but just give it a minute and come right back on and we will continue our service. An announcement about next Sunday's service, October 25th, we will have a guest preacher with us um, who will be the candidate for our interim senior pastor position. So please do uh, save the date on your calendar and make sure to join us in worship next week. Immediately following that service during our coffee hour, um, we will have a congregational meeting on the interim candidate. So if you're a member of the congregation, please do stay for that. We are just about 16 days away from the election day. So if you are interested in doing sort of any last minute phone banking or text banking for Get Out the Vote, uh, please do see our Justice and Witness team, Jan, Jean, or Drew, their information is in the bulletin. Also on the horizon is All Souls Sunday, which will be November 1st. This is a time where we honor and remember all those we have lost over the last year. So if you would like the name of a friend or loved one included in our bulletin and included in the service on that day, please do send their names to office at lrucc.org no later than October 28th. Other reminders, as the fall approaches, um, our labyrinth is available for anybody to pray or walk. We give thanks for our women's ministry team who led us through a beautiful retreat yesterday that included walking the labyrinth. So if you are interested in uh, having some spiritual moments to yourself at our labyrinth, please do stop by the church anytime for that. <clears throat> our children in youth choirs are back up and running. If you have a child who's interested in participating in music, please do contact Ashton for information about rehearsals. Also a reminder that it takes a lot of folks to make Sunday worship happen. And if you would like to volunteer to be a liturgist, a greeter, a prayer person, please do sign up on our Sign Up Genius link or contact the church office. During the weeks of Advent, which are the Sundays between November 29th and December 20th, please sign up to be a liturgist if you are comfortable with coming into the church to participate in a socially distant Advent wreath candle lighting liturgy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to have a couple of folks who are willing to come into the building, um, light our Advent candles and be recorded doing that for our Advent services. So please only sign up to be liturgist those weeks if you are comfortable coming into the building. Another gentle reminder for Zoom, please do keep yourself on mute at all times, except for the passing of the peace and when it comes time for our joys and concerns time. But for now, friends, thank you again for being with us in worship this morning. I would like to invite our liturgist for this morning Nancy Hall to lead us in our call to worship. 
The earth has its rulers, but God is above all. Praise God above all, the giver of life. The mountains may tremble, the oceans may roar, but God's presence is more powerful than the earth itself. Come into God's presence, for God is among us now. O oh God, show us your glory. We seek your ways. Come to the rock, the God of life. For God is present in this space now. Amen. forever and right now by your spirit open our ears to hear your word to us in scripture in sermon in song open our eyes to see your word to us in children's faces in troubling statistics in our action together open our hearts to feel your word to us in the warmth of love, in the ache of sadness, in the energy of commitment, strengthen our desire for justice for all children and our wills to advocate and organize so that all children may grow up safe and thrive in community. Amen. Friends, at this time, I'm going to take everyone off of mute 
and we are going to share a moment of greeting and peace passing with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, Bye, everybody. Peace. Good morning. Peace be with you, everyone. Hi, Julie and Mark. Good to see you, Julie and Mark. With you. Hi, Karen. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Ron. Good morning. It's the one time that you do. Hey, Lori, how are you? Very well. Good to see everyone today. A special welcome to all of our visitors this morning. It's wonderful to see you all today. Okay, where are we? I'm... All right, I'm going to put everyone back on mute now. Oh, no. <laughs> we up there yet? One second. <laughs> okay, I'll mute you. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice said, why are you putting me to the test you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God, the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away.
Have you ever been asked a trick question? The type of question that is going to make somebody mad no matter how you answer it? Where you really can't win no matter what you say? In these days and times, we don't have to go far to find examples of these types of questions. I'm not going to get into it today, but if any of you have been following the debates, if we can call them that, and the Supreme Court hearings, you'll know what I'm talking about. In this week's gospel reading, Jesus faces a trick question meant to trap him in saying something ungodly from a form, a group called the Pharisees. The Pharisees, whose name is derived from a word meaning to be separated, were committed to the pure worship and following of God. Some believed that to follow God purely meant that you had to be separated from the world. Many believed in a strict, literal interpretation of the biblical law. Laws such as love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, and laws like you shall have no other God before me, and you shall not make yourself a graven image. The Pharisees were serious about their faith, and in a sense, we can think of them as nationalists who despised the Roman Empire. They shared a great deal in common with Jesus, which may explain why Jesus spent so much time with them. The Herodians, on the other hand, we don't know too much about, but based on their name, we can rather safely assume that they had a more tolerant view of the Roman Empire and its system of occupation and taxation. Their name implies that they were the political minions or theological allies of King Herod, the king who ruled over the land at the pleasure of the Roman emperor. They probably had more of a go along to get along type of attitude. We don't know how they interpreted the Bible per se or the laws at the time, but the one thing that we do know that the Herodians had in common with the Pharisees was a growing dislike and distrust of Jesus. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? If Jesus had answered this question, yes, it is legal to pay taxes, the Pharisees would have thought that they caught him, saying Jesus doesn't follow God purely and thus shows loyalty to the emperor. But if he had answered, no, it is not legal to pay taxes. The Herodians would have gotten mad, saying Jesus will get us all killed by the Romans. If we don't pay taxes, the emperor will judge us and consider us to be in revolt against the empire and will send his legion to destroy us. Faced with this trick question, Jesus didn't do what we've seen on the news this week with our politicians which is to answer a different question, the one he wished he had been asked in the first place. Instead, Jesus does something strange. Reach into your pocket and take out a coin, Jesus says, and now show it to me. Whose face do you see and whose inscription? They go along with it and take out a coin and show him and showed it to him. It was a denarius a coin that had been issued by Emperor Tiberius and that was used for paying taxes. Why does Jesus want to see the coin? Seems like kind of a strange request in that moment. But anyone who has read the previous chapters in Matthew or the Gospels, broadly speaking, will know by now that Jesus does some really strange things that often leave us scratching our heads trying to figure out where he's going. But I would suggest that whenever Jesus does or says something weird, there's always a powerful message about God in there somewhere. For example, when on a boat with some of his disciples in a raging storm, Jesus decides to take a nap when his disciples, most of whom are experienced sailors, are having a panic attack. This was all to teach them that 
as long as Jesus is there with them, there is no storm that can take them out. Also, while when uh, Jesus hears that his best friend Lazarus is in another town on his deathbed, Jesus doesn't even stop for a moment and throw up a prayer for healing. Instead, he stays where he is in another town with his disciples, and he lets Lazarus die, arguably to teach his disciples and all present that God is greater than death. Or when we find Jesus encountering a man lying down at the gate by the pool of Bethsaida, who has been blind and paralyzed for 38 years, the text says. And in a seemingly insensitive move, Jesus asks him, do you want to be made well? All to teach us that our healing requires our active participation. Jesus does a lot of weird things, but always for a good reason. And so he asks to see the coin. And on the head side of the coin was a portrait of Tiberius, along with the inscription, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of the divine Augustus. This suggests that after his death, Augustus had become a god, and thus King Tiberius is a son of God. On the tail side of the coin was the image of a woman depicting peace with the words high priest, referring to the emperor as the high priest of the empire. So right there in their very own pockets, in the shadow of God's temple in Jerusalem, no less, the Pharisees were there holding symbols of worship to false idols. They had a coin with a graven image and inscription of an authority claiming to be the son of God and the high priest. Right there in their own hands, they had brought forth a graven image of a false God with a statement of faith that ran counter to the faith of Israel. And just like that, in a seemingly strange act, Jesus turns the tables and traps them, the Pharisees at least, in their own question. He simply responds to them, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things that are God's. This statement can be interpreted many different ways and has been by biblical scholars across the ages. It would have been nice, of course, if Jesus had fleshed this out a little more, but perhaps the ambiguity of his words is meant to teach us simply that money matters. Money matters to us as individuals, as members of a society of people. It determines the quality of life for us and our families. It determines some of what we are able to leave as a legacy for our future generations. For many of us, how much money we have or don't have influences how we see the value of other people and our own self-worth. But money matters to God as well. It is the most raised, most contentious issue in the Bible because money is often considered God's number one rival, in a sense, for leadership over our lives. In a culture like ours, it is hard not to make an idol out of money. So Jesus simply says, give to God the things that are God's. So what might that be? The Bible answers this question in a number of ways, also reflected in Jesus's sometimes strange responses to things, but the message is clear. We are gods. Each and every one of us are made in God's image and are sent to care for this world that God loves so much. And so when we come into another stewardship season as we are right now, we need to think about what we are giving in dollars and cents as a reflection of our desire to give God the best of ourselves. The Bible often describes the act of giving of our best selves as bearing fruit. Why? Because fruit do two things, feed people and scatter seeds so that more things can grow. 
if you think of a church as something that bears fruit, that church will feed the needs of God's people and spread the gospel to people and places such that it can take root in new places, new hearts, and new minds. But this doesn't happen in a vacuum. It requires our participation and investment. That's why Jesus asks us to take a long, hard look at our money. If you take out your wallet right now and are blessed enough to have some paper in there, you'll likely see the faces of some slave owners, the perpetrator of the genocidal Trail of Tears, coupled with some quasi-religious civic symbols that do not represent the God we serve. In the United Church of Christ, we say that each person is unique and valuable in God's sight, and that we are called by God to be servants in the service of others, so that we may truly be a united and uniting church. And friends, let me be clear. If you thought 2020 was hard, you ain't seen nothing yet. 2021 is gearing up to be one of the most challenging we will likely face in our lifetimes, no matter what the outcome of the election is. I say this as someone who knows that there is always opposition to justice, especially racial justice, no matter who is in office. Even in the midst of everything 2020 has thrown at us, we at Little River United Church of Christ have made significant strides in our outreach and social justice work. All things that embody our understanding of who God is calling us to be in this moment. Back in January, if we can remember that far back, we had over 200 people from Little River and the wider community join us at Cinema Arts Theater for a viewing of the movie Just Mercy and discussion on ending the death penalty. Now we didn't charge a dime for anyone to participate. We only encouraged folks to give as they were willing. And we ended up raising over $800 for advocacy efforts aimed at restorative justice and ending the death penalty. In the spring and summer, we mourned alongside communities of color at the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and Breonna Taylor. We had conversations on racial justice internally and with other congregations. We decided to take a bold step in proclaiming Black Lives Matter on our website and with one of our roadside banners, but we know this is not enough. As one of my UCC minister colleagues likes to say, we can't be in this just for the witness. We need to be in this for the win. Or in other words, no one is going to be saved by banners alone. We need to be committed to organizing our communities for justice over the long haul. And we've taken steps towards that this year. Earlier this week, many of you picked up CSA boxes from the Black Church Food Security Network. By directly supporting Black-owned farms for the food we eat, we are doing our part to bridge the gap caused by generations of intentional economic disenfranchisement of Black communities. Throughout this year and over the course of the past several years now, we've seen increased in tax on our immigrant neighbors. We've seen people disappear into detention and deported without notice. But we've also stood in solidarity with folks in sanctuary. We've learned how to protest against the powers that be with masks and social distancing. We participated in a number of virtual rallies, urging the governor to do more to protect the vulnerable. In part because of the efforts of this congregation, more and more folks in prison are receiving letters of support from Little River Pen Pals. At least three Black-owned farms in the Mid-Atlantic have expanded their customer base after being denied federal support. And after two years of living in sanctuary and not being able to move freely in society, 
Rosa Gutierrez and her three children, who we've been accompanying since December of 2018, are now out of sanctuary and living in their own home. These are huge wins and deserve to be celebrated, but none of it would be possible without your investment in the church. I'm taking the time to explicitly share these things with you all because a lot of church is at its best when you don't even know that it's happening. A lot of times church is at its best when you don't even know it's there. Like when you have a problem and a pastor or a deacon is available to help you in your moment of need, when you're organizing an event and the flyers and the bulletin blurbs and the Zoom invites get sent out correctly and on time, when the security systems are working so that you and your children can feel safe in our space, when you don't have time to go to every protest and town hall meeting, but a team of organizers affiliated with your congregation are there to make sure the voices of people of faith get heard. When these things are provided and running smoothly, the church is at its best and we can focus more intently on praising and serving our God. At this time, I would like to invite our chair of stewardship, Bruce Summers, to offer an update on the 2021 stewardship campaign. Thank you, Reverend Alexis, for your sermon and your support. And um, thanks to our staff and also all our volunteers and church members and friends who've done so much. Um, a couple messages this morning. First, I wanna thank you all for your 2020 pledges, the ones for the current year, which has made a huge difference in a very challenging time. Um, and also all that you've done in extra gifts to support benevolences, some of which Alexis mentioned or referred to, um, it makes a huge difference. Also for the inspiration of all the volunteering you do in the community and people who go to rallies. I, I, I don't go to rallies, but I like that members of Little River are going to those rallies and providing our support for all these different causes. Today starts the second week of our stewardship campaign. Our goals are to raise about $560,000 to cover the costs of operating the church and our ministries next year. And we'd also like to see about 120 um, gifts or pledges. Um, so far, we've received $77,000 as of Friday and uh, 14 pledges. And so we have a ways to go, but I have a lot of faith and you are friends of Little River and members of Little River. Um, next week, we'll hear a um, recorded sermon from our probable or potential interim senior pastor. And I hope you all have a chance to listen to that, to that sermon. Part of what we're giving for, for the stewardship 2021 is to support the new interim senior pastor who will help guide us through thinking about what we want to be as a church going forward for the next decades. Um, online, we now have um, online cards, which you either can email back to stewardship or you can submit online. There's also, you can print out the card and mail it to the church. Um, I wanna thank you all individually and also through your families and friends and networks for allowing us to have such a strong storehouse of gifts and gifts are not just financial. As Alexis mentioned, there's so many more pieces and parts to it as far as the influence we have on our communities, on our members and families, but also people we'll never meet. So, Thank you for your time, your talent, your treasure, and we hope to uh, be able to report great progress again next Sunday. So thank you very much, and uh, back to you, Alexis. Thank you, Bruce. 
And now we will enjoy um, a video prepared by our stewardship committee, which shows more about our storehouse of gifts and all that we offer at Little River. Friends, at this time, I invite you to make your offering to Little River UCC, and you can do so in a number of ways. You can mail a check to the church. We're still receiving mail at the building, or you can visit our website and click on the Donate Online page. It'll take you to an interface like this, where you can enter an amount for our operating fund or any of our special offerings. If you click on our action and outreach page, you will see a link to the Congregation Action Network's COVID-19 emergency fund. This is a fund we have been supporting throughout the pandemic that goes to support our immigrant neighbors and friends, many of whom are ineligible for uh, state and local and federal support. As Bruce mentioned, if you would like to complete your pledge for the 2021 campaign, and you would like to do so online, you can do that by clicking on this link in the center of our main page. That'll take you to okay, it is a, a page where you can either download and print a physical pledge card, mm -hmm. fill it out and mail it back to the church, or you can complete all of your pledge information online using our Google form through that link. Friends, for all of the blessings that will be made possible with this offering, we give God thanks and praise. Bitch. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures dear.
Friends, the time has come now for us to share our thanksgivings and concerns with one another. If you have a prayer or a thanksgiving you want to share with the congregation, I invite you to raise your hand now or use the chat box to enter a prayer and I'll share that on your behalf. Just a reminder, you can raise your hand in a couple of ways on Zoom. You can hover down on the participants tab and find your name and you can click raise hand and it'll put a little icon in your Zoom box or you can just wave until we see you and call on you. Um, <clears throat> but for now, friends, let us share with one another. Friends, we have so much to pray for in our community and our world. Um, so as we lift up these prayers and keep these prayers in our hearts and our minds, I'd like to invite Nancy Hall now to lead us in prayer. Good morning. One of the pleasures of my week is to watch the message brought um, by the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. Last Sunday, he melded the Old Testament, Psalm 107, verse 2, with Romans 8, 1. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, from Psalms, from Romans there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. The life of the spirit contrasted with the life in the flesh. He resolved that the redeemed of the Lord lives so. I have come into possession of a needlepoint red dove, the sign of Christ the Redeemer. To redeem is to repair, restore, or retrieve, or make worthwhile, or to free from captivity by payment of ransom, or to free from the consequences of sin. If we at Little River are redeemed, then we need to live so by responsible stewardship of the earth, protesting social justice, feeding the hungry, and by demonstrating through our actions that lives matter to us, the redeemed, and to the redeemer, Jesus Christ. Lord, let us live out of our redeemed lives, free from the captivity of the flesh and sin, into the fullness of your love for us. Amen. Friends, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, go now as those who have found favor in the sight of God. Be imitators of Jesus Christ, an example to all of the life of faith. To the world in which you live, give your love and service, and to God, give all that you are and all that you shall be. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.